Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi you all. You are with me today, Dr. Aizu. Okay, now we look at the second part of System Development Lifecycle, SDLC. So in the previous class, we have to look at the planning, analysis and design phase. So today we look at the implementation and maintenance. The fourth phase in SDLC is implementation. What are the major activities in implementation? So the first major activity is develop program and apps if necessary. In this activity, there are six steps involved. Number one, analyze the requirement. We do IPO analysis. Number two, design the solution. We do algorithm. Number three, validate the design, test the algorithm. Number four, implement the design, we write the program. Number five, we test the solution, we run the program. And the last step is document the solution, we prepare the documentation. The second major activity in implementation is install and test the new system. Tests performed during this step include four different tests. Number one, unit test. Unit test verifies that each individual program or object works by itself. Number two, system test to verify that all programs in an application work together properly. Number three is integration test to verify that an application works with other applications. And number four, acceptance test to check the new system to ensure that it works with actual data. Third activity in the implementation phase is to train the user. Training involved showing users exactly how they will use the new hardware and software in the system. It can be done in one on one session or classroom style lectures or web based training, which is a self directed, self paced online instruction technique. Training is important to help users to be ready for the changes and adapt quickly to the new system. The fourth major activity in implementation is to convert to the new system. There are four conversion strategies, which are direct conversion, parallel conversion. Phase conversion and pilot conversion. Okay, these are the diagram of how the conversion being done. We look at the first conversion, which is the direct conversion. The user stop using the old system and begin the use of the new system at all at once, or on a fixed date. So if you look at the diagram, the old system stop at all and replaced by the new system. This is what we call direct conversion. The advantage is the fastest implementation technique and requires no transition cost. But the disadvantage, it is extremely risky and can disrupt operations seriously if the new system does not work correctly the first time. The second conversion strategy is parallel conversion. If we look at the diagram, the old system is still being used while the new system uh, is introduced to the company. So the user runs the old system alongside the new system for a specific time and only stop the old system when the new system functions as expected. The advantage is it is less risky as users can revert to the old system if the new system has problems. But there is also a disadvantage. It is costly to operate two systems at the same time. The third conversion strategy is phase conversion. What does it mean? Part of the new system are phased in separately at different times until the new system is fully implemented. If you look at the diagram, the new system is implemented phase by phase to replace the old system. The advantage is it is less risky as the new system is implemented part by part. Users will also have time to adapt better to the new system. But there is one disadvantage. Slow implementation technique as it will take some time before the new system is implemented as a whole. The last conversion strategy is the pilot conversion. Only one location in the organization uses the new system so that it can be tested. After the pilot site approves the new system, other sites convert using one of the other conversion strategies. So, if you look at the diagram, only one organization use the new system. The other still use the current or, or, or system. After the system being implemented 
the, the new organization, then all the other organization will use the new system. The advantage is be less risky as the new system will be implemented at one location only. Any problem found in the new system will be fixed before implemented at all other locations. The disadvantages is in slow implementation, meaning as it will take some time before the new system is implemented at all locations. The last phase in SDLC is the maintenance. The first activity is to perform maintenance activities, which involves fixing errors in the system as well as improving it. Uh, two types of maintenance. Corrective maintenance is a process of identifying and correcting errors. Adaptive maintenance is a process of including new features or capabilities. System analysts will meet the users to determine the initial maintenance needs of the system. To discover whether the new system is performing according to the user expectation. The second major activity in maintenance phase is to monitor system performance. System analyst monitors performance of the new system. Determine whether the system is inefficient or unstable at any point. If this occurs, system analyst will investigate solution to make the information system more efficient and reliable. This process is known as perfective maintenance. The third major activity in maintenance phase is to evaluate system security. It is to identify all information assets of an organization. Identify all security risks that may cause an information asset loss. Identify the safeguard for each risk to detect, prevent and recover from a loss or damage. So that's all uh, about SDLC, phases in SDLC. So we'll wrap up the chapter. The first one, what is or define SDLC? SDLC is a set of activities used to build an information system. You have to remember the keyword. Who are the people involved in the system development? So, the group of people involved are the system analysts, the steering committee, and also the project development team. The next one, you have to remember all the five phases in, of SDLC. The first is planning, the second phase is analysis, the third phase is design, the fourth phase is implementation, and the fifth phase is maintenance. And you should be able to describe phase and explain major activities for every phase. You should also be able to describe prototype, test, and conversion. And make sure when you're writing the, SL, the phases in SLC, make sure it is uh, written accordingly from the first until the fifth, main, the fifth phase. So I think that's all for chapter 6. If you don't understand any part of the lecture, please refer to the tutorial lecture. And uh, also you can find more information in the, on the internet. And please do exercises in your tutorial. That's all for now. Thank you.